You're listening to the Voice of Russia in Washington. I'm Kim Brown. May 8th marks the day that Europe celebrates Victory Day. That day will be marked tomorrow in Moscow, in Russia. This day marks the victory of World War II for the Allies over the Axis powers. And this morning, we're joined on the line with Andrei Fursov. He is a historian, also the director at the Center of Russian Studies at Moscow University for the Humanities. Andrei, thank you so much for speaking with us. Hello. Give us the significance of the victory of World War II, but more specifically about the role that the Soviets and the U.S. played and, and the importance of the cooperation of that relationship. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to say that uh, the Second World War, which we in the Soviet Union in, and in Russia now we call Great Patriotic War, uh, it was a very special war for the Russian people because uh, for the first time we had an enemy uh, which wanted just not to defeat Russia, but he wanted to annihilate Russian people in principle. He wanted to oust it from history. So for, for us, Great Patriotic War was the war just uh, for our being in history physically, uh, morally, and intellectually. And in this war, really, uh, United States of America uh, was the most important um, ally uh, of the Soviet Union, much more important than Great Britain. And uh, uh, we, in fact, our victory uh, over Hitler was one of the decisive points uh, in uh, decisive moments in the history of the 20th uh, century. Up to now, victory in the Great Patriotic War uh, is ultimate value for all post-Soviet space. Uh, this is what unites people here, uh, and uh, because almost everybody understands that this, uh, in fact, it was uh, the main achievement uh, of Soviet civilization of Russian people in the 20th century. The significance of the of the relationship of the Allies, sir. How important was it for uh, leaders like Winston Churchill and and, and Joseph Stalin and uh, Harry Truman to set aside their differences, or excuse me, President Roosevelt to set aside their differences for the for the prevailing of the greater good? Uh, well, um, you know. <laughs> uh, there was a tricky union between Great Britain. Uh, uh, United States America and the Soviet Union. Uh, all politics is a tricky thing. And uh, the Second World War was a war with two different layers. At one layer, Great Britain, Soviet Union, and United States of America were fighting Nazi Germany. But on the second layer, uh, Soviet Union and United States of America uh, had an aim of uh, destroying of British Empire. Alan Dulles, uh, in the course of war, uh, said it almost openly that the main task uh, for the United States is not only to destroy Nazi Germany, but to destroy British Empire. So it was a kind of double game, uh, two, uh, two games in one. Let's discuss the animosity that the Soviets had for Hitler and the Nazis. Obviously, the Germans were responsible for a tremendous amount of carnage uh, of, of, of Russian uh, citizens dying uh, throughout this, this war conflict. Uh, are some of those animosities still with us today? No. On the part of Russia, there is no uh, animosity to uh, Germany now. But what definitely is going in Germany and in the Western Europe, it's a kind of creeping rehabilitation of the Third Reich. Just several weeks ago in Germany, they released a film uh, on the Second World War. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the title is Our Mothers and Our Fathers. And the film depicts uh, good German soldiers in Russia, how they are helping uh, to build schools, to repair buildings and so on. And then <clears throat> ugly Soviet uh, warriors who came to Germany killing, raping and so on and so on. 
So uh, it is really uh, a process, a kind of rehabilitation, uh, a creeping uh, rehabilitation of the Third Reich. And as another side of it, demonization of the Soviet Union and uh, an attempt to equate Stalin's regime and Hitler's regimes. Sir, as we look back on this world war some many decades later, what are some of the takeaway lessons that can be learned, uh, not only about cooperation, but about intervening in a human rights situation, sort of what we saw uh, happened during the Holocaust? We're kind of seeing something similar happening uh, in Syria with so many uh, tens of thousands of persons being killed. Uh, what, what lessons should we learn from history about the World War II? Uh, you know, uh, history is a tricky thing. Uh, the main thing about history is that no lessons are learned. But I think that the real history of the Second World War is not written yet. Because when we say that Hitler and Germany was uh, the, uh, the, the only guilty uh, it w- in the Second World War, it wouldn't be correct. Uh, Gustave Le Bon used to say about the First World War that it was Wilhelm II who, uh, whose drop of water was the last in the cup. But the historian's task is to uh, analyze and to answer the question, who filled the cup? Uh, uh, who filled the cup? The same question can be asked uh, about the Second World War. And uh, now lots of books were mm, written uh, during the last decades showing how uh, British financial capital and how American financial capital, how they prepared Hitler incorporated uh, in their own uh, interests. So if we uh, really want to have some lessons from history, uh, one should not prepare evil because the moment you 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 begin preparing evil, you become uh, part of this evil. And the later deterioration of relations between the Soviets and the Americans after World War II, uh, obviously it didn't come for at least another 10 or 15 years uh, when the Cuban Missile Crisis really reached its zenith. But how can we explain where cooperation turned into uh, com- competitiveness uh, to the extent that it began the, this long period of icy relations between the world's superpowers at that time? Oh, that's a, it's a very long conversation explaining the roots of the cold of the Cold War. Americans blame Russia for the Cold War, and the Russians used to call America uh, in the emergence of the Cold War. Of course, I am on the Russian side because Russia was not in a position uh, to worsen relations with the United States after the Second World War. And I'm sure if uh, Roosevelt was alive, if he still lived for several years, uh, then we wouldn't have Cold War because uh, Roosevelt and Stalin uh, had good contacts and uh, there are indirect, uh, indirect evidence that they decided to do some um, actions together with USA and uh, uh, Soviet Union after the Second World War. But Roosevelt died, uh, different groups came to power in America, and the whole course of history went uh, in different direction. And for our final question, Andre, is it likely that we'll ever see such a an engagement on such a, a global scale that we saw in World War II. Obviously, we've been on the brink of some major, uh, even nuclear entanglements, but thankfully those have all been averted before before things got too far to the point of no return. Has, has the world learned more about how to engage with each other diplomatically rather than militarily? No, oh, I'm afraid that after... NATO aggression against uh, Yugoslavia, against Libya, uh, against Iraq, we cannot see that the world learned too, uh, too much. But uh, as for the, mm, the war of the kind uh, of the Second World War, I'm sure that uh, 
in our days, uh, many aims which were mm, planned by the, the Second World War, now they, they can be achieved by financial war and information war. So I do think that uh, the wars uh, of the uh, kind of, uh, of the Second World War are possible only on the periphery. For example, a kind of Iran-Iraqi war or mm, the war, say, somewhere in uh, Africa. Uh, as for the so-called civilized world, I don't think it is possible, though, uh, as Nassim Taleb uh, uses to say, there is always possibility of the black swan. So let us hope that the black swan of the new war will not emerge, uh, will not emerge. That's Andrei Forsov. He is the director of the Center for Russian Studies at the Moscow University for the Humanities. He's also a historian. And we've been speaking about Victory Day, which is being marked today in Europe and will be celebrated tomorrow in Russia. And the lessons that we have all learned from the tragedy of World War II. Andrei, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.